Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com and Peel Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is March 1st. We're heading into spring, almost a couple of weeks. And uh, this is our weekly look back at last week's eBay auction results. See what's been going on over at Catawiki. A few other things we're going to talk about today. One of them is the, uh, the sales coming up for Asia Week in New York. We did a blog on it this week and put some information in there. We've uploaded all of the catalogs that are available currently uh, here to the, uh, the, the the book bin that you can see around the site. Uh, you can click on it. Sometimes we call it the reference desk. And uh, the top row is full of catalogs uh, for these sales. Uh, there's some that have not been posted yet, but as soon as they're posted, we'll pull them down, convert them into uh, catalogs, and put them up here. So you can check it out, and we'll do a more, a more lengthy video on this next week uh, when we get some time. But I wanted to go over a couple of the sales that are coming up just really quickly, just so you can, might tempt you to come over and flip through the catalogs, some good auctions. Uh, the first one I wanted to talk about is uh, uh, the Irving Collection. This is an amazing collection. It's a collection of Florence and Herbert uh, uh, Irving. Irving. And uh, they uh, began collecting. Herbert was sort of a character. He, he bought his first antique, I think, uh, during World War II. Uh, it was a piece of glass in France. And uh, then he, he migrated into Asian art, built a huge collection, an absolutely legendarily big collection. Uh, a lot of it's now uh, been gifted to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And then a lot of the pieces are going to be uh, auctioned off, apparently, in, in, over the course of a couple of auctions. And uh, some of the things in here are items like this. This is incredibly fine, uh, very rare Ming Dynasty lacquer uh, mallet vase, uh, just exceptional, probably made in the 15th or 16th, early 16th century, uh, just tremendous. And then there's, uh, oh, th this thing is just full of stuff. There's also some Japanese stuff in this um, in this particular catalog that they collected. They collected both Japanese and Chinese. Uh, there's some phenomenal bronzes, including Yunnan bronze, this tall, tall standing, and the seated figures. Um, just uh, absolutely great stuff, and we'll get into it a bit next week. And then there's another sale from the Junkunk collection. This is like the collection that never stops. Now, there's been a, a number of uh, uh, sales uh, of Junkunk materials over the last uh, over the last five or six years, I guess. It's been going on for a while, and uh, this is another good one. Uh, Stephen Junkunk was a, a, a Midwesterner, um, he was a very successful businessman, and uh, went on to uh, become a, an avid collector of Chinese uh, antiques, especially sculptures in bronzes. And one of the things that's in here is this really amazing Six Dynasty uh, 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 bronze dragon. It's small, these are very small. It's only around five inches long, but uh, unbelievably rare and intact. Um, and this is the kind of thing that Stephen collected. He also collected big figures. You may recall a while ago where there was a sale with some big Tang figures. He loved Tang statues. Well, here's another one. Great big white marble bodhisattva. Uh, it's around four feet tall, three, three, three feet tall, rather, in uh, beautiful condition. And uh, carries a six to $800,000 estimate, so see how it does. And uh, we'll get into this this load again <clears throat> next week sometime. But it's 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 uh, quite a quite an offering. And uh, then next is this. Um, for those of you that love Kangxi and, and Qing Dynasty and unbelievably fine Qing Dynasty porcelains, this is part two of the Jerry Tang collection. You may recall last year in January, uh, a book was published. Uh, we we did a video on on the book. We we uh, talked about it because this is I, I got to meet this collector. Um, uh, he has an enormous collection of uh, unbelievably fine Kung Shi pieces, and he's selling off some of it. And uh, last year's sale uh, set records. Um, uh, one of the vases, I think, brought a million five for a Kung Shi vase. And this, this sale is equally interesting. And uh, some of the pieces in it, you, you got to see them. One of them is the, what's on the cover is, is it's known as the Font Hill vase. Um, and we'll get to that in a second. But I want to get over to... Uh, Let's see, we're gonna go here first. I think this is the brush pot, yes. And it's signed Femi Ver brush pot. These are unbelievably rare. This is a very good one. Uh, uh, here they did a landscape, landscape uh, photograph of it. Um, just uh, an unbelievably great little uh, brush pot, estimated at 80 to 120,000. We'll see how it does. It may go over that. This this is a, a very rare bird, as they say, and it's uh, um, uh, in beautiful condition. The next thing up is um, is this the Font Hill vase? 
Uh, this is a big vase. This vase is 29 inches tall and was painted, um, uh, we talked about it last year, about Famille Rose um, porcelain that was devised uh, and implemented during uh, the, the very end of the Kangxi period, around 1718 or so. And uh, this one was in the famous uh, collection over in England at Font Hill. Uh, the, the, uh, the family were, the Morrisons were avid collectors. And there's a good write-up in here about the, about the, about the family with some pictures uh, of the uh, original collector from, from whom it came and um, some very interesting background information. Uh, Font Hill today is open to the, the public. You can actually uh, rent part of the place if you want to hold a wedding there or something. The estate's still in the family, but uh, they, they, they had to monetize it eventually because it's so big. I think it's 9,000 acres. Anyway, this is a, an absolutely incredible uh, piece of porcelain and painted in the round, as you can see, uh, the shading of the enamels and everything. And this, is, this should do very, very well. Uh, it's estimated pretty moderately at three to five hundred thousand, so we'll see how it goes from there. All righty. Now over to um, this is the next thing. This is a, a Kangxi charger that's in the sale. It's 20 inches in diameter. This thing is a monster, um, uh, and it's a, a, a feast scene, a, a bouquet, you know, a banquet scene. Um, but the quality of the decoration on this for, for a, a plate that's 20 inches wide uh, is just uh, stupendous. And um, I think the market's going to find this a pretty exciting thing. All right. So uh, we'll do some more on these next week. But that's just sort of a heads up to see what's coming down in New York. There's, a, there's some very good Himalayan art, uh, works of art coming. There's a great uh, catalog they've got out on uh, Japanese block prints and so forth. So it should be interesting. I think there's 48 exhibitors this year down in New York for the uh, anniversary, 10th anniversary of Asia Week. Uh, Jim Lally's getting an award uh, for his contributions to the Asian art world. Uh, he's a dealer in New York, but he was instrumental in starting the uh, um, um, auctions in Hong Kong with Sotheby's back in the, in the 70s. He was, he's quite a guy. And uh, he's a Massachusetts guy, actually, too. Not, he, does, he was raised not far from where I'm sitting. Anyway, <clears throat> that's where we are, okay? And now let's head over and see how things went at eBay because it was a good week last week. Uh, there were some interesting things. They all did quite well. And our friend Josh had a, a big sale, as many of you know, that ended on Monday with some good things. In it. And one of them was, uh, was this plate, a uh, nice-looking uh, 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 sort of a Noya Straits dish with a lot of calligraphy and script on it. It's a late 19th century plate. But unusual coloring and uh, beautifully done. And uh, lots of script all over it. Has it had a chin, uh, like a chin lung mark on it? Wasn't chin lung, but boy, was it a beautiful dish! And uh, it did well. It brought uh, twenty-two hundred and seventy-five dollars. All right. I'm going to do a couple of things that he had because he had some interesting things. Next up was this. Was this? Uh, this is a Japanese bronze, a huge Japanese bronze. This thing is over two feet long, of a of a bull uh, fighting with a uh, a bear. And uh, I just love this. And if you uh, blow it up, the quality of the casting on this was uh, just amazing. Josh and I talked about this on the phone last week because he, he absolutely loved it. And um, it's funny, up until a, a day or two before the close of the sale, I think it was, you know, a few hundred bucks. But there was a lot of interest in it, uh, according to the statistics on his site, apparently. And uh, he knew it would do well um, for, with the Japanese collector. But it's beautifully done, signed, and uh, very unusual subject matter. And uh, it did just fine. It brought $2,751. And then next he had this up. Um, when I first saw these, I, I was kind of surprised because it's a very unusual pattern. I wasn't sure what the age of them was until I looked at the foot rim. All right, that's an old, that's a nice 19th century foot. All right, uh, mid to late 19th century, beautifully done. Uh, nicely, it's got some legitimate grunge to it, that nice crisp edge and so forth. But the decoration on this pair of vases was quite unusual, um, the way they had it paneled with these black frames on a yellow ground. And I, I, I can't recall having seen this particular uh, style before, but it's clearly old, clearly at least 19th century, and um, uh, beautifully enameled, just really beautifully enameled. And there was a lot of interest in them, and they brought $7,388. These were pretty big, though. These things were... Uh, how tall were these? 20 something inches? 24 inches tall. So they were two feet tall. But what a handsome pair. Uh, and I think they did fine. 
All right. I think they're also a very good buy. And this is something I wanted to point out that he had in the, in the sale. This is something that caught my eye. It's very interesting. It's actually a Persian dish. Um, and, and this is something you, you're going to see out there, especially when you have Wan Lee pieces. You're going to see um, the, this Wan Lee, this pattern, particularly from the Wan Lee era, copied not only in uh, Dutch Delft, which many of you have seen, but also in Persian pieces. And this was a Persian example and a pretty rare one. This is a very rare thing. Um, Beautifully done, and in the center is a Persian gentleman uh, playing a lute, all right? And uh, I know it's not Chinese, but I thought I'd point it out because occasionally, in, in, uh, recently, I had a number of pieces sent to me, and people wanted to know what kind of Chinese when we started this uh, uh, identification program here at, at Bitamount. Uh, somebody sent me a couple of pieces of porcelain, and they are uh, 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 ceramics, and they wanted to know where in China they were made because they had Chinese patterns on them. And they were actually uh, uh, Persian. Uh, and the nice heavy quartz glaze, cobalt blue, because there was a lot of uh, uh, cross trade between uh, China and the Middle East, as many of you know, um, um, for centuries, starting in particular back in the, in, in the when the Yuan Dynasty went on, and that those relationships continued. They imported cobalt. That's where underglaze blue uh, first originated. Was out of the Middle East and trade, and uh, they also exchanged designs and patterns. So sometimes you'll see a piece of porcelain or pottery, not, but they didn't make porcelain really, pottery that looks Chinese and it's actually Persian. And I saw just just last week I saw a bunch of them. All right, it was an interesting it was an interesting inquiry. All right, and this did well. It brought twenty seven hundred and sixteen dollars with a break. Okay, if this was perfect, probably would have brought six or eight thousand anyway. All right. And then on to this was uh, uh, the uh, uh, tea, uh, tea harvesting uh, painting that uh, Josh had. This is a late 18th century one, um, very nicely done watercolor, not on pith. This is done on paper. And sometimes these are done on English paper even, imported paper. And uh, occasionally you'll see one, you hold it up to the light and you can see the watermark on the paper itself. But this was Chinese paper, I'm suspecting. And interestingly, it, it bared the label of the Child's Gallery in Boston. And uh, the reason I mentioned that was, was that the fellow that wrote the book on the China trade, Carl Crossman, um, who's up here, he's a nice guy, he, he lives in Florida now, I guess. Um, he wrote the, the famous, the, the groundbreaking book uh, through his relationship with the PB Essex Museum called The China Trade by Carl Crossman. And uh, Carl, Carl and his partner owned the Charles Gallery together for many, many years. So I suspect um, this painting may have uh, been framed there during uh, um, his, his time um, with the Child's Gallery, it's just as an interesting side note. But um, it's a nice looking uh, 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 watercolor, beautifully done, and it did pretty well, okay? And these occupational paintings always have a following. It brought $1,216, uh, but a good value. Those, these are nice, uh, they're always top quality painting, and, and uh, uh, people collect them, in the, and especially the occupational ones, and court scenes always do well. All right, and then on to this was this heavily gilded uh, rose medallion tureen. This is an unusual one, as you can see. The, most of these don't have this much gilt on them. This one was just, just, just drowning in gilding, and uh, a very, very pretty one. And I think it was a good buy, three hundred and forty-five dollars, a very reasonable price for that. All right, uh, that seems to be sort of the range that a regular, a regular one would bring. And you get one with this, 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 this with this much color and uh, um, how it glows so much, and the gilding on it was still in good shape. I think it was a nice buy. All right. And then on to this was this uh, big, nice planter with the horses, okay? We're always with the horses. And um, uh, here are some attendants, with the, the bannermen with their banners, and uh, some uh, people going at it over here. And this was a nice thing, okay? It was a f 12 inches in diameter, 10 inches tall, beautiful planter. I like the uh, diaper pattern around the border. And um, it ended up selling for $809. I think that was a pretty reasonable buy for that, and I hope they put a plant in it. All right, if you buy planters, put plants in them, okay? Uh, I went to a, a fellow's house one night. He was a wonderful guy. He had planters everywhere. He had no plants. They couldn't understand it. All right, and now on to this, the brush pot. I liked this little brush pot. This was a nice old brush pot. It was a real one. There are a lot of brush pots on eBay, and 99% of them are less than 20 years old. But this was a real good one, a nice old one. It came from a, a, a seller in the UK that we keep an eye on. And uh, this is just a nice old pot, good surface, 
good le legitimate looking cracks on it from uh, shrinkage. Uh, bamboo uh, doesn't isn't very happy in, in houses with central heat sometimes because it causes them to dry out a bit too much and they crack. Uh, if you have them, I suggest you maybe keep them in your bathroom during the winter. Let the moisture from your showers keep them from get cracking too much. Uh, but this is a nice pot, beautiful carving, good patina. The piece had a wonderful, wonderful patina. Here's a picture of it in some of its hands for scale. Nice pot. And I think this was a great buy. 412 bucks. okay? $412. It was inscribed. Uh, nice old one, somewhat unusually carved. And uh, this is... Um, um, some fellows over in London that put things on. They also, you've seen, we've had the Ojimi beads. They sell lots of small, uh, uh, beautiful uh, Japanese pieces as well. All right. Nice pot. And then onto this, they also had this, this silver inlaid uh, incense burner with an old wooden lid. This was a nice incense burner. Um, a, good, a good one. Uh, probably, uh, 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 I would guess it was probably 18th or 19th century. Nicely done. Uh, lots of legitimate looking age on it. And uh, it did it did fine. It brought twenty eight hundred and ninety eight dollars. All right, uh, that was a good thing, and uh, I hope they keep finding things. These guys get good items. All righty. Now moving on to this, the Famille Rose uh, uh, jar. This was part originally of a garniture set, so there would have been two of these. Uh, or three of these rather, and then a couple of um, uh, open uh, beaker vases, or two of these and three beaker vases. They alternate them, but at any rate, um, that, this was a nice old, uh, nice old jar, and uh, did did fine. Brought a thousand fifty one dollars, mainly because the colors were still in such good shape, nice and vibrant, and, and it was in nice condition. All right, and then on to this. This was a really good uh, carved lacquer in row. And what was interesting about it was that it was that the uh, uh, the toggle was made out of staghorn, and lacquer cased, a nice looking bead on it. And inside the st carved staghorn, that's this material is, is horn. When you see these black dots everywhere, that's generally always horn. Is was this wonderful little bronze bird. Okay, and here's the here it is opened. So you can see its sections. It was in great condition. If you're a collector of these, this was a nice example. Carved and, and lacquered uh, in gold and in, in black and enamels and so forth. And uh, it did fine. This is a Meiji, uh, late Edo period piece. Uh, it brought $2,700, all right? Now, it seems it's interesting because Japanese things we saw with Josh's big bronze and we're seeing with this, there seems to be some life coming back into the Japanese art market. Um, we'll see what happens down in New York in the next couple of weeks and uh, in the coming year. But it does appear that the uh, uh, Japanese market is having a little bit of a resurgence for really interesting things. And then on to this uh, eight, late 18th, early 19th century uh, sepia decorated export platter with immortals all over it. This is a nice one. This border pattern uh, we've seen before. It's a fairly well-known pattern in export pieces. It appears on dishes, plates, terrines, and you know entire services made of this stuff. This was a nice plate, and it brought $811 which is right about on the money. And the same seller had this. This was a terrific uh, sort of mid-19th, maybe a little before century, um, uh, Famille Rose uh, meat, meat well, and, well, and, uh, well, uh, well platter. Uh, it's one of these things where the, this liner goes on top, and there's a drain at this end. It goes down a little bit deeper. Let's see if we can see that on the back. You can't really see it from there. Okay, there it is. I'm going to see this. Hold on. There it is. Uh, There, it looks as though it's a little deeper on this head to, to drain into when you're carving, but nicely done, an unusual pattern. I like the pattern, I like the rocks, love the birds, the whole thing. I thought this was just a great thing, and I was surprised at what it brought. It only brought $373. I think that was one of the best buys of the week. That's an unusual pattern. It's a it's a, a platter with its strainer, and it still has its original strainer. And it was 18. Yeah, it was big. It was 18 inches long. This was a big piece of well done porcelain, and uh, bravo whoever got that. That was a good purchase. Okay, and now on to this. This was something my, my, my friend Will had over in the UK. This very nice immortal carved in wood, beautifully done. 
a really, really, really pretty wood carving. Uh, excellent quality. Uh, you check it out, you notice the hair, everything done beautifully, good face on it, okay? And um, it, did, it, did, it, did, it did just fine. It brought $832, but I don't think that was an overpayment at all. If you love really fine uh, late 18th, early 19th century Chinese wood carvings, it was a very striking example. And uh, then on to this platter. This is a, probably a nice piece of pak tong, incised, decorated with script. And I love these old trays. Sometimes they call them opium trays. Uh, this was a good one, though. It had a nice landscape on it, which was unusual, with this Kieran in the foreground, the ascending phoenix, and then the, uh, the flying clouds and so forth. And uh, it, it went for, I think, a, a pretty fair, reasonable price, $690. All right, that is not a lot for, for a very pictorial piece of Pak Tong. And it was, that was an unusual one. Did just fine. Okay, and then on to this Fitzhugh platter. Well-known pattern. Um, this is a, a fairly common pattern. It's copied a lot uh, by a number of companies, including French companies, uh, back around the turn of the century. This was a Chinese one. Had fine decoration, looked to be in pretty good shape, and ended up selling for $331, which is right in the range. Now, this is what I, what I was talking about. Was the, here you have a nice big platter. Fitzhugh, everybody's seen them circa, you know, 1800, 1820, somewhere in there. And then you had that one we just looked at before, that Famille Rose example that was the same size with uh, actually bigger with a liner, which the liners always break. That's why I was so surprised to see the liner. The liners rarely survive, um, or not often anyway. Anyway, this was also a good buy, but I think the Fitzhugh piece was, I mean, the uh, Famille Rose one was a better buy. Then there was this Kangxi tree, uh, central tree pattern, single tree pattern dish. This was a very good buy. This was a lovely plate. The seller had two of them. And uh, look at this. And I didn't, there was nothing wrong with this. I couldn't find any breaks or anything. 190 bucks. All right. I thought that would probably, I thought when I saw this, I thought it would bring 350 to 450. So I think somebody got a nice buy on this. It's not a seller I've seen a lot of. Maybe people are hesitant because they don't know them. But uh, it was a good looking plate. Then on to this, the Femi Ver uh, uh, mallet vase. Not Kung Shi, but very much in, obviously in the Kung Shi style. But uh, you only need to flip it over and look at the foot on it, the bottom. You know, if you're not sure, you can always check the tootsies on these things. And a nice rounded foot, perfectly good, 19th century example. Nicely painted, but very, very nicely painted. Very expressive features uh, on the faces. And uh, if you're not ready to step up to bat, you know, for a thirty or forty thousand dollar one th in the, from the period, this isn't a bad buy. Went for forty four hundred and twenty two dollars, which is right in the range <clears throat> of a of a Femi Ver plate of the same, basically the same period um, of. Uh, 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 a couple of weeks ago. Now the seller put this in as a 17th century uh, uh, vase. Um, I don't agree with him at all. I think this is a later thing, but um, uh, I don't think he's. I don't necessarily think he's being dishonest. It's hard to tell. A lot of people can't tell, and I'm sure the buyers knew because if this was a, a period one of this size, it would have brought uh, about six times what it brought, seven times. Okay, and then on to this. This was uh, our friends over in the Netherlands had this up. Nice little uh, Ming plate. Uh, uh, Chan Chi wear Wan Li, Wan Li around 1600. Good looking though, pretty, loosely drawn, nice borders. You know, you got these, these sort of teardrop outer borders and then these, this sort of uh, 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 curved cartouche filled with flowers and an insect in the middle. And look at this, $113. Perfectly good buy, all right? Perfectly good buy, nice little item. And then on to this. This was uh, another one of our friend Will over in the UK had this. was this very nice flambe glazed uh, uh, bottle vase, good red. The, uh, the, the toning was excellent on it. And this was a, a nice old one. Uh, here's the foot rim on it. It's stepped. It's got some grunge on it. And you have this uh, uh, brownish uh, uh, business underneath, which is pretty typical. But a good-looking foot rim on that. And the glaze was just wonderful. Nice-looking glaze. Beautiful glaze. Here's the rim, all right, there's some minor scratches and so forth, which is typical on these. Monochromes, it's very easy to spot scratches, which is one of the ways you can date them. Just make sure the, pat the scratches aren't in patterns, which means the scratches have been faked, all right. And uh, there's some nice natural crackle, because the glazes on this stuff tends to be pretty thick and prone to crackling, which is really part of the charm of it. And uh, it did fine. It brought $4,123 
It's a I, well dated. It is a late 18th, early 19th century piece. I, I tend to think it leans more towards the 18th century than the 19th, but he was being conservative. Anyway, that was a nice thing. That was a really, really pretty thing. Will likes monochromes. All right, and then over here, there's some other things coming up this week, um, uh, closing uh, through the weekend. There's a bunch of stuff closing on Monday night. We'll have it all in the newsletter. Um, this double gourd vase is on. This transitional period double gourd vase will be on there. This is from a seller over in, um, um, he's in the UK in Oxford. Uh, nice looking little vase. It's already up to a thousand dollars. It's got five days to go. I suspect it'll bring two or three thousand by the time it's over. And uh, this nice looking pair of Famille Rose, uh, late 19th, early 20th century, but with elephants on the sides, uh, but a nice shape, very sort of Chin Lung in style with these black birds, Famille Rose, and then they have this yellow ground uh, neck up above. And this, the, doing these sort of oddball combinations that are successful. Well, one of the things that uh, you see on Chin Lung pieces, and uh, this is this is a, a nice looking but later uh, pair of vases, but very very pretty. Uh, they're up to uh, there's a, there's a couple of there's a, there's some rim restoration. It says there might be a hairline. It's up to they're up to three hundred fifteen dollars. They'll probably do pretty well because they're pretty. They're just very very pretty, and. Uh, We'll get to the videos next week. If you haven't subscribed to us yet, please do. And uh, come over to bitemout.com and get the newsletter. We send it out every week. And uh, as I said, next week we're going we're gonna to have a, we'll probably have an announcement about something new we're adding yet again to the site in the next two weeks. We've been working on it. This is something we're working out with eBay. And I think a lot of you will find it pretty interesting. Uh, have a great weekend. We'll see you all next time. And thanks very much for taking the time to watch. Uh, and ha have a have a good uh, weekend. Hope you find something out there you like. All right, bye bye.